Hello and welcome to Maths with Jay. In part A, we know that our logarithm is 2, so that means that our index is 2 and our base is x. So we know that x squared is equal to 64. Now usually if we had x squared equal to 64, we would get two answers, wouldn't we? A positive and a negative one. But note that the question says find the positive value of x. So we simply know that x is equal to 8. And we could check that in our calculator. So we're going to use our log to any base button. And then we have discovered that x is 8, so we put an 8 in there. And then we're going to use our right arrow button on the replay. And then we want 64. And that equals 2, so we're right. Let's put that to one side. And let's look at part B. So we've got an equation here where the x is on both sides and it's embedded inside a log. So what we're really trying to do initially is to get the log to base 2 of something or other that contains both of those x's equal to a number. So let's just write that down. So we want the log to base 2 of an expression in x, so all our x's, well, both our x's are going to appear in there, and that is going to be equal to something that doesn't involve the x's. In other words, we're going to be looking for the log to base 2 of an expression in x, in both our x's, equal to a number. If we can get to that stage, then we'll be able to solve the equation. So let's just put this up here and keep it in mind for what we're trying to do. So we're aiming to get both logs on the left hand side and we want log of something or other. So the log to base 2 of 11 minus 6x is already there. So let's uh, write that down. Now the other one is on the right hand side, so let's take that away from both sides. And also we want to have the whole expression being log of something. So that power, that 2 in front of the log can be written as a power. So that's one of our laws of logs. So we're taking away log to base 2 of x minus 1 squared. So the 2 in front of the log has become a power. So that's our left hand side and then our right hand side has got the 3 on it. So remember we're trying to write the left hand side as one log and we can do that by using one of our laws of logs. We've got a log of something minus the log of something else. So here we've got log of first expression divided by the second one. So we're going to have the log of sorry, the log to base 2, of course, and on top we're going to have the first expression, 11 minus 6x, and then because we're subtracting the other log, we're going to be dividing by x minus 1 squared. So all that in one big bracket, and now you can see that we have achieved what we set out to do. We've got the log to base 2 of something in x equals a number. So now all we need to do is write this as an index expression. So we know the base is 2, the index is 3, so the fraction involving x can be written on its own, so x minus 1 squared is the denominator, and that's equal to the base to the power of the index, so 2 to the power of 3, and we know that that's 8. So now we've got rid of the logs. Next thing to do is to not to have a fraction. 
So let's multiply both sides by the denominator. So we've got 11 minus 6x is equal to 8 times x minus 1 squared. And we can multiply that bracket out, x minus 1 times x minus 1. So that will be x squared minus 2x. And multiplying negative 1 by negative 1 will be plus 1. And let's multiply out that bracket so that we've got 8x squared minus 16x plus 8. And let's gather all the terms onto one side. So that will give us our quadratic 8x squared minus 10x minus 3 is equal to 0. So now all we need to do is to factorise that. So we know that 3 will factorise as 1 and 3. 8 will either factorise as 8 and 1 or 2 and 4. And in fact we'd get that 4x times 2x will give us what we want. And 1 times 2x and 3 times 4x. We want minus 10x so we need a minus 3 and a plus 1. So that will give us 0. So either one of those brackets has got to be 0. So x has got to either be equal to minus a quarter or 3 over 2. So what we need to do next is go right back up to the original equation and check our answers. Now remember that we can only find the log of a positive number. So you find that when you substitute these values in, that x minus 1 is going to be negative when you substitute in the negative quarter. Which means that our only solution is x is equal to 1.5 or 3 over 2. And we could put the reason down here because x minus 1 has got to be positive and it would not be positive for negative a quarter. And then we could check our answer. So we want to check our answer. So we've got x equals 3 over 2, or we could think of that as 1.5. And we're looking back at the original equation. So we're going to look at the left-hand side and right-hand side separately and check that they both come to the same thing. So when we substitute 1.5 into the left-hand side, looking inside the bracket, we're multiplying 1.5 by 6, so we get 9. So we've got log to base 2 of 11 minus 9. In other words, log to base 2 of 2. And you know that there's a, a general law of logs, a general rule, that tells us log to base a of a is equal to 1, because a to the power of 1 is equal to a. So that applies in this case as well, because 2 to the power of 1 is 2. We've got that log to base 2 of 2 is 1. So the left-hand side of our equation is 1. So the right-hand side, well, we've got 2 log to base 2 of, and inside the bracket, we've got 1.5 take away 1, or 3 over 2 take away 1. So we've got a half in there. And then we're subtracting, no, we're adding 3. Now we can think of a half as 2 to the minus 1, can't we? If we think of writing it in index form. And we still want the plus 3 at the end there. So we're only finding the log of that part there. And then we could bring the index out in front to get minus 2 log 2 to base 2. And so that's going to be minus 2 plus 3, which is equal to 1. In other words, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so we have correctly solved that equation. And if you're unsure of evaluating logs, you could, of course, check this on your calculator.